Welcome back guys. So today I want to build a mount that goes here that holds a GoPro or any other kind of camera or device, but I want to do it in a different way than I've seen purchased. So there's a lot of mounts that require the mounting of these within these two screws that comes out and goes up and has a little flat area for one of these guys to just mount to. And then a lot of guys, they'll just run their GoPro right up above and they'll even sometimes do an extension. But what I wanted was a swivel. Let me show you that. So the swivel here, if you can see it, I love it. This is made by Scotty and this is all Scotty parts. And this is a monopod from Walmart. And these are ram mounts, one inch ball ram mounts. And there's a little trick to get this little system in. It's not that easy. And then your GoPro attaches to that. I got all of this off of Kayak USA's YouTube channel. And he does a really good job of explaining on how to build that system. So I don't want to take anything away from him. He did a really good job. So I have to give him all the credit for the actual pod and swiveling and stuff like that but I wanted to make a mount that will receive it on those two screws. So let's get started. So here's the mount that I'm talking about that Scotty makes. And I like it because if you look here, it's lockable and unlockable. And the way that this swivel is working is exactly on Kayak USA's YouTube channel. But you can lock it in and it will never come out, no matter what you do. So what I wanted to do is just make the mount for the sea -Doo. So I got the cardboard aided design cut out. Pretty rough, but I'll show you what it will look like. So that's generally how sea -Doo's of all kinds, their mounts are. The only difference is this Scotty mount, and I just love it. It's lockable, it's swivelable. So it'll just sit in there like that, just like that. And it won't touch. It's still pretty low key, like the ones that are sold. And it's very versatile. So that's how it would mount. This is all going to be aluminum, so it won't corrode. If you look at Kayak USA's video, this is like a little snub. It's actually that. So this piece and this piece are the same. And these are just little grippy ring. You can adjust it real easy and it stays so stable. And this was just shoved in here. However, he did it. You can see that on your own. But what I'm saying is this piece right here is makes it lockable. Original piece transferred to aluminum, eighth inch. So let's do what I do by cutting it out because I don't have the right tools. Okay, don't mind the sandals. Sorry about my ugly feet. Nibbler. Readily available at Home Depot. <laughs> this is just to get the rough cut. All right, so there's your rough cut. Those are two bends, and then I'll clean all that up. I need to take a little bit off of here to fit in the seed a little better. So we're gonna do that first. So this fits in here just perfect. I'm gonna make these all smooth. And then tomorrow we'll go to somewhere that has a better break than I do. And we'll bend these. And then we'll drill the hole. And then we're done.
All right, spent some more time just kind of going back and forth, back and forth, and evening out exactly how I like. So you guys know, it's aluminum. So use an aluminum flap disc, and it removes material really quickly. And I'm gonna use just a regular cheapo Harbor Freight disc to actually sand the edges so they're smooth. Overall pretty heavy with that. Tomorrow we'll do the bends, cut the holes, then we'll be done. All right, so I went to the big break. It's about a 15 foot break. Wasn't that easy to line up, but I got it. Got the holes drilled to mount them. Keep in mind, these are only going into plastic. This is a one and a half inch hole saw. If you can look there, it's actually just a shy bigger than than the diameter of right here, right there. If you can see, is actually just under three eighths. I'm gonna go to the second step. You can see that cleanly fits in there. So I'm gonna mark for the mounting holes. We're gonna use the step bit. See the holes there? Yeah, so second step. All right, I got her all clamped down and painted. If you look, it does not touch. I painted it with Rust-Oleum Hammered Black. It's very durable. It looks good. Kind of got a hammered finish. I'm gonna have this locked and unlocked switch towards me so I can reach it. I messed up. When I designed this thing, this is how I designed it. And you guys saw that. And nothing touches when this is installed, which is ideal. But guess what? <laughs> I forgot the lid opens. <laughs> The bracket doesn't hit. That's not the problem. So what I did was I shaved down this guy. That's as far as I could shave it without the actual activating lock to be removed. <laughs> Next round of these, it's just gonna be an inch taller. It will solve everything. Just didn't want it to stick up too tall. I'm gonna put spacers in there for now. We'll go fishing tomorrow. I installed the spacers. I didn't need an inch. So I'll get back to that may not need an inch taller but there's four washers under there i'll measure them and i'll remake it but that works so here's the guy installed and then i'll open it So, no problem. Doesn't need a full inch, but oh well. All right, now that it's installed after the spacers, it's all bolted in. Lock it in. Take that on this thing. So if you look there, <laughs> it doesn't touch. So I think the next one will definitely be a full inch taller right there, but it'll work for tomorrow. It's not touch. All right, one thing I wanted to touch on was what makes this actually locks in. Once it's locked in, you know, the uh, turnability. One thing to mention is on these end posts when you ground down all these little nubs so it's it can spin but then it's locked in from this guy what makes it have friction is that electrical tape right there that you see so you can see my electrical tape is kind of messed up 
but what makes it have friction is the electrical tape. You can add more for more friction. You can add less for more maneuverability. I don't think the electrical tape is the best option, but that's what I used for the beginning of this. So if you get these ends and you ground it down, that's what it's gonna look like. So it can slide around. Take your time on grinding those little nubs off. And if you don't grind them all the way, that will be plastic friction. And put it in, test it, see if it works. Grind a little more, just leave a little bit of those nubs on there. And I think that's much longer lasting solution. So here's the mount removed from the Sea-Doo. I liked this mount, but to be honest with you, the thing is I didn't like about it was, so for the kayak, that mount and system works really well because for a kayak, you want to swing a little wider and a little longer side to side. But for the Sea-Doo, I thought that it would be helpful in the same way. But what I found on that test ride with the Sea-Doo is that while cruising like higher speeds than a kayak would ever be, the mount actually bounces up and down quite a bit. And I was at its lowest setting. If I really extended it out, it would be worsened and bouncing more. And I just didn't think that it was good. I also thought that it was a little further away than I would like it to be. I feel like I I wasn't as close to the camera as it should be. So for those reasons, I think that that mount is not suitable for the Sea-Doo or any jet ski, but I'd like to keep it as an option, but I also redesigned the mount. So let me show you. This is the new mount. It's a little taller. It's the same mount as the other one, except it does not have a hole. It just has a protrusion like that. It mounts the same. If you can see, it's a little taller. It doesn't hit the nose. It's not overly tall and this is a one inch ball mount for ram mounts i'm gonna insert it just there so here's what i got i've got a one inch ball mount with a male quarter 20 thread sticking out of here i've got another one inch ball mount quarter thread with a ram ball one inch swivel deal into a very small smatry is the brand i mean it's amazon guys i'll put the link in the description it's very small it's about 18 inches it will extend to 36 or 32 something like that and there's the gopro so if you look at this distance from the rider it's much more up into the rider's face you can easily swivel it with the ram ball setup i can go like that that's actually probably where i'll ride these gopros are very wide angle and i just don't feel like i need to be way out here from the previous mount this is the one i was riding with in the last video and i had it way out here so it was much further away from the actual rider that was one and look at all the extensions i have i mean this thing can go like six feet I don't think that's very necessary, but on a kayak, it's very necessary, I feel. But for the jet ski, this little guy will go up to, I think, I'll double check, I think it's like 30 inches, and that's plenty. I feel like the camera should be closer to the rider to see more of the fishing action. Guys, let's get something straight. I'm not trying to bring you along and show you how I would do a mount, and then halfway through the video, say it's shit, to remake the mount, and just take you for a ride for content. My intention, is to i love creating products modifying things and i want to take you along and maybe show you what it's kind of like doing different things but i also wanted to bring you on the journey of that i plan on this channel to bring you ideas and creations of mine all right i just opened the seal and all the seats after washing everything and look what i got do you see all that You see all that water? Guys, this is something you need to pay attention to. Luckily, I flushed a lot of water down here and it was fresh water, so this is not salt water. But these things, even though they're sealed this good when they're all covered up, you've got to be aware of that. So I am going to leave the seats off, cover it up without the seats so that when the cover's on, at least this much is open so it airs out. For now, I am going to wet vac that out. Just wanted to give you that little tip. So imagine 
again when I told you when I was cleaning out the jet ski that I don't care who you are, where you fish, that all sea dews will gain some water. And it's true because if you ever take your sea dew out to the ocean, you will see a little bit of water. Even that little tiny puddle, it's about half an inch. Imagine if that was salt water and you said, eh, I don't care. It's not much. It's not doing any damage. Well, the condensation in that salt water would be this. And we all know what salt water does. So guys, just do what you can. Air it out, vacuum it out, whatever you gotta do. Keep salt water out of here. This will only help you in the long run of your jet ski. Okay, here is the drawing of the two mounts. This is your rear one, this is your front one, and this is the strap that you will see or have seen in the previous video. So let's go over the rear one. This is all two inch strap about an eighth inch wide aluminum so anything of this fashion can be bent on just a vise with some pliers or some force and let's go over this this is what sits inside the original mount and the reason why all of these are like this is because this is how the original mount goes this is your sea dew strap hanging around if you can see that from the original mount on the back, the original battery sits here in the original mount. This is where the new battery sits. So what you need to do is build a frame that sits in the original mount that you can use the original strap and strap it over this little loop you're gonna make. So this part is three inches. This part is one inch. This part is one and a quarter. This part is six inches. This part is six and a quarter. And this one is five inches tall. Now, from here, I'll roll to the clip of me explaining the cut for this. If you look here, this is what you would need to make. All I did was make two slits about an inch and a quarter down, and then halfway up, start bending with pliers to make that little piece right here. And the original strap can clamp on here, hold everything in place. But it's about an inch and a half down and you can use a sawzall to make the slit and then take some pliers and about halfway up start bending this aluminum down this way and i believe this aluminum is 5051 which is bendable aluminum it's not 6061 or whatever that's more of like a billet material you need bendable aluminum strap any home depot will have bendable aluminum strap so you guys can do this at home. So these are your measurements. This is the battery. I'll link it in the description. If you actually make all of this and actually carry this out and you can use the original strap and what I did as a buffer is on the corners and the top. I used an old wetsuit material just to cushion this battery from like getting worn out or whatever because it's not really made for it, but I'm just trying to help you guys out. And here is how it should look. All right, now on to the front one. This is what you're making. The original battery sat in the original tray here that comes with sea dews This is your new battery. So what you're making is just a cradle to cradle the new battery. So you want to make this piece, and this is two inch bendable aluminum. You can get it at Home Depot usually, but you need to make sure it's bendable and not billet aluminum. So here are the measurements. Two inch, one inch, three and one quarter. Sorry, this is two inch, two inch one inch two inch and this will cradle your battery so now once you've built that you screw it down the original base that the battery sat in 
is plastic. When you screw this down, you don't really want to use really long screws because it will go through your hole. All you need to do is secure it kind of. So just use like inch screws, inch and a quarter would be fine. You're not gonna go through your hole. Don't worry about that. All you wanna do is just secure it so it doesn't go anywhere because you're gonna be strapping this all down anyway, so it doesn't matter. This right here is same strap, two inch strap, and it's an L. And what this is going to do is it's going to strap is over here, your original strap, and it's going to latch onto this little hook that you're going to make. So what you're trying to do is there's a little hook from the original tray and you're going to make this L piece with a hole here. And this is seven and a half inches down from here. And that's the start of the hole. So you want to do, I would say like a half inch hole. And the, you know, the uh, two inch strip, seven inches down seven and a half inches down. So what you're gonna do is, that's your start. What you're gonna do is about a half inch hole and then file this out. So it's kind of like an oval. And then the total piece from here to here is about eight, eight and a half, let's say eight and a quarter. Eight and a quarter, so from here, this little L piece, eight and a quarter, and so eight and a quarter to the very bottom. Your holes are gonna be here, from here down to here, half inch holes, three holes, oval it out. And then this is going to be two and a quarter. And then what you're going to need to do is do the same thing on the back mount, which is Sawzall. I'll, this is the top view of the two inch strap. You're going to Sawzall down about an inch and a half. And then halfway up, you're going to take pliers and you're gonna bend, bend it down to make this guy, right here, to make that guy. So that's, that's your goal, and then the original band will fit on there, and that's what I did. So the little hole that you made way down there will actually slip into the, the new hole in the two inch plate will slip down into the old retainer, and then it will just L over, and then the old strap will strap and hold the battery down, no problem. I put wet zoo material underneath there to kind of vibration resist, and you're good to go. You just doubled your power. Hope you got something out of this video, and we will catch you on the next one.